Um, my name is Bar El Kfir. I'm a principal in the investment team at Vintage. Uh, Vintage, it's okay, it's the, this is the first guy presentation. I'm, I'm just moderating it. Um, Vintage is a venture firm uh, founded 20 years ago, uh, managing $3.6 billion today across fund of fund investing, primarily early stage VCs, um, as well as secondaries, both in funds and companies, and growth stage investing directly into companies. We do that across uh, Israel, US, and Europe. And me personally, I'm coming from 15 years of experience in cybersecurity, starting as an operational role, mostly in intelligence core, and the Ministry of Defense, and moving with time to more product management, and then investing. For the past almost a decade, I'm investing in cybersecurity companies, working close, closely with the founders in mostly early stages. Um, I think back when I started investing in security was 2015, and the number one questions the question that I was asked is, haven't we exhausted security already? Like, don't we have enough solutions? We have endpoint and network and identity and whatever. Haven't we done with that already? And I used to answer in, in twofold. First, that security is always a race between the attacker and defender. So we're never tired. And second, uh, what, what is beautiful about cybersecurity is that any emerging technology sorry, will have some sort of implication on cybersecurity, whether um, will change the threat landscape or the way that solution works, um, or both. And I think AI is definitely one of the most interesting emerging technologies these days. It's something new, not sure if you've heard of it. Um, I'm obviously kidding, AI is not new, but um, the, the, the changes and the breakthroughs in recent years and months makes it uh, make make us feel like the the revolution is is about to come and this has a lot of implications on um on on cybersecurity in general so um the plan for the next hour or so is to have a session talking about the future of AI and cybersecurity we'll have five speakers um that will cover both the changes in the threat landscape in the solution landscape as well as how are we protecting those AI and machine learning. Thank you. Um, so first, I would like to call uh, Guy Caspi. Um, Guy is the founder and executive chairman of the board at Deep, Insta at Deep Instinct. Hi, Guy. Okay. Um, I'm good. And I'll give a quick introduction. Mr. Caspi is, Mr. Caspi is a seasoned CEO and serial entrepreneur with more than two decades of enterprise technology experience in executive C-suite positions. Caspi is a thought leader with deep domain expertise in deep learning and AI, is simulating in cybersecurity, and was selected as technology pioneer by the World Economic Forum in Davos, Switzerland in 2017. Caspi, um, the floor is yours. All right. Hey, thank you. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, happy to see everyone here, many friends and people that I know. Uh, since it's very short, I'll try to take you to a very short journey about uh, the implication of AI as we see this from the side of the defender. Uh, and actually, when we are looking at this picture, at least my view is that some of the tools that exist today in the market are actually a Trojan horse against everyone which is in the industry of uh, cyber protection. Uh, as you can see, the animation is amazing. Uh, <laughs> never mind. So what we see here, it's my view, but most probably the view of everyone in the industry about what is happening on the attack threat landscape. When we are looking at this slide, what we see is that the speed, the volume, the sophistication of cyber attack becoming something which is very unique, and the gap between the technologies and the uh, defender is becoming very unique. Now, this is before we are adding this red generative AI attack, which is becoming a huge threat on everyone which is dealing with security. If you look at that, uh, I'll start with that. I mean, 
Look what I asked ChatGPT. Uh, why is generating AI cybersecurity threats? And the answer is amazing. Actually, ChatGPT is saying that it's very easy for him to evade almost any technology in cybersecurity, including machine learning and AI capabilities. And guess what? This is true. Uh, this is a demonstration, which I will not do live because we have only 12 minutes, but you can see 13 easy steps to trick ChatGPT. Now, if you are familiar with ChatGPT, you will find, I'm sure that everyone were trying this, you will find that in many aspects of ChatGPT, when you're trying to do something, it's like error. I cannot do this. It's not ethic. <laughs> this is very easy to bypass very easy to bypass and what you see here i created in like maybe 15 minutes and at the day that gpt4 was uh, launched i did the same with trojan horse so the point i'm trying to make without getting into details here because it's too complicated we and others but we are on the good side i'm talking about the bad people can use this to generate malwares and very sophisticated attacks, which are based on huge amount of data of attacks that was gathered by uh, OpenAI in the last few years. And it's a very dangerous tool. I can tell you that I was trying this without naming companies. This malware, which is relatively simple, was bypassing almost, I think, 20 of the most sophisticated and famous cybersecurity companies in the industry. Uh, so, what should we do and where are the problems? Uh, in my view, files, it's the main problems in most of the organization, because file is the nature of the organization. You have files coming in and out of the organization from so many places, and this is something which is uh, very important. Our view at Deep Instinct, and I think it's the world view, it's the Gartner view, is that we need to shift shift uh, left. And the reason for that is that despite all the mechanism and the cybersecurity technologies and everything that we have in the market, we are still being breached far too often. Why? Because the technologies and the lion's share of the effort of most of the companies was mainly focused on identification and treatment on the other side, on that side. When you have ransomware, when you have generative AI malware, it wouldn't be possible to stop this after it already entered your organization. There's a different techniques today. And we need, as an industry, all of us, doesn't matter if you're in the cloud, in the endpoint, in the server, in identity, we need to shift left to the old good companies that used to prevent something. And this is all the vision that we bring into the table. Now, what is the right technology? Uh, this is actually the, I think, the most important question. So I would say that there are, there is a very big difference between deep learning and almost any other form of artificial intelligence and machine learning. I'll start with machine learning, which is the implementation, which is most common in AI in most of the cybersecurity companies. In machine learning, we have huge consumptions of memory, very big processes, and in most of the cases, it has to be done on the cloud. You can't process huge amount of data on the edge. These take times to get answer. And what's happened is that many times after you get this answer, too late, you're already infected. So this is just the bad, now comes the ugly. In machine learning, we cannot process the raw byte. So what we are doing, we're taking analysts and cyber experts that will take out the properties and the features and will extract the right features for every malware. It was, okay, process maybe 10 years ago with half a million new malware, it's almost mission impossible. We people, we are terrible in feature extraction. You are all expert in recognizing cat and dogs. If I'll give you 100 pictures of cat and dogs, and I'll ask you to recognize cat and dogs, you'll probably give me 100% accuracy. But if I'll ask you, can you please explain what are the differences, what are the features that are different between a cat and a dog, 
I'll not spend your time, time, because I have students for that, but it's mission impossible. We are very bad in articulating feature. And this is why machine learning is not something that is working well in the era of cybersecurity. Add to this the false positive, the accuracy rate, and the fact that machine learning needs to go in and out into the cloud too late with attacks that are taking milliseconds. While we are looking on deep learning, we process 100% of the information. No people. It's all no feature extraction. The brain learns by itself. And this is a magic which creates something very different in terms of time to detect, accuracy, false positive, and every other parameter that exists in the market. Now, the question that many people are asking now in the last, I would say, few months, OK, so what about LLM? OpenAI is very famous. Maybe we are going to use LLM to save cybersecurity. No, you will not. It's not working. I'll tell you why. It's very easy. GPT-3 had 170 million parameters. GPT-4 has more than 100 trillion parameters. Large language model are large language model. They are large and slow, very slow. And they are working in a methodology which is a regressive methodology. One word at a time. So while they are amazing in creating human understanding, learning text, learning Wikipedia, it's almost mission impossible to use that in inference mode for cybersecurity, which you need to take a decision in less than millisecond. So all the goodness of LLM could be implemented in cybersecurity for incident response, for replacing people, for maybe have one source of truth for malware classification, but for sure not for prevention or detection. And there are many other, of course, uh, issues, I would say, about LLM, which is an amazing technology, but it was designed specifically for text. There are many attacks in the market which are without text. Uh, so when we are looking on this, we are looking on script, we are looking on many malware, we're looking on PowerShells and many other creatures which will not name them now. LLM will not solve this problem. Only deep neural network at the moment can do this. And the reason for that, again, is that we are working and training this on millions and billions of parameters. That's great. It's autonomous, no people involvement. We skip the threshold of feature extraction and all the problems that we have while we are trying to extract features and be very smart, because we can process as human non-linear patterns and recognize and understand all the patterns while the brain can do it. We are using this in time of detection, which is super fast. At the moment, when you're looking on the umbrella of artificial intelligence, the whole family of artificial intelligence, there is only one family of algorithms from the dawn of computer science, which is deep neural network that can allow us to process information super fast in inference mode. In less than a few milliseconds, it can give an answer. And I'm not talking just on cybersecurity, on many other implementations. This is why you saw many other implementations of deep neural network in Google and Amazon and, of course, Tesla. Um, it can be applied on binary and packet data. Time to detection is very fast. Uh, and at the end of the day, without getting into too much of uh, details, because we have a short time here. LLM, at least at the moment, is not something that can be used to uh, prevent or detect malware. Uh, so say hello to predictive prevention. Uh, what is predictive prevention? It's the ability to predict. It's something that is almost mission impossible to reverse engineer. Uh, I'm not saying it's 100% bulletproof, but I'm saying it's very difficult to reverse engineer. Uh, it's very hard to evade. It's predict the attacks before they are coming, before something is going to be executed. We don't need that something is going to run and will be in runtime. 
the data models, and we're talking on unknown threats, move behind basic patterns, recognition, enable prevention in a very unique way, in a very broad way. And at the end of the day, in my view at least, deep neural network at the moment, and I think that Google is sharing the same view more or less with few meetings that uh, I had with them in the past few weeks. This is probably the holy grail of the cybersecurity technology if you know how to implement this. Um, so it's creating eventually a prevention versus detection versus, preven versus protection versus many words which are laundry to the fact that you can't stop the threats. You are going to deal with the threats after it's going to be infected. And you know, like COVID, we just ended COVID a year ago, nothing stopped the uh, COVID. Only one thing, a massive global vaccination. And this is what we are trying to do here, a massive pre-execution prevention that will stop maybe not all the threats, but the majority of the threats, 99% of them, before something is going to enter into the organization. Um, we don't have time, so I'll skip about uh, that part, but it's very easy if you know how to uh, train deep neural network, but eventually, just to understand at the moment, Deep Instinct is one of five only deep learning framework that exists in the world. There are others like TensorFlow, Theano, Cafe, PyTorch, of course, uh, a few others. But this is the only one that was purpose-built for cybersecurity and is very complex versus the others which are mainly doing vision and other activities. So uh, in the last few minutes, three minutes that I have, a few minutes about Deep Instinct, what we are doing in Deep Instinct. So we have a platform that can address prevention anywhere. Doesn't matter if it's in the cloud storage, custom application, SaaS application, on-prem NAS, backup and recovery, could be also agent, of course, endpoint, mobile, server, and this is the idea. The idea was to create a platform that will allow us to serve our customers and stop files and malware. Doesn't matter where they are. And there is a new category coming in Gartner, already announced, which is data security, uh, and this is what we are doing. We are securing the data of customer, and we couldn't care less if the data is stored in EMC and Dell, in your buckets S3, in your application, your endpoint, or whatever. Two minutes, all right. So, uh, with the last two minutes, just idea of deep instinct, we are more or less eight years in the industry. We are serving mainly uh, Fortune 500 customers. Like you see here, some of the, of the customer mainly the industry, banking, federal, governments, mainly across Europe, Japan, and US, more than $350 million fundraising. Uh, behind the company, you can see something very interesting. So for once, on one hand, you will see a tier one investors like BlackRock. On the other hand, Zscaler, which is the biggest proxy cybersecurity gorilla in the world, NVIDIA, HP, and others. And uh, what we are trying to pitch, what we are trying to bring into the market, it's something different in the technology, but also in what this technology will bring as a value to our customer. And this is pre-execution prevention. Instead of running and chasing and hunting and EDR and do all these very nice words, we are literally prevent the attacks before it starts to run. Thank you, everyone.